video, I want to talk to you about how stress causes acne. Um, we all know that stress causes acne, whether you've seen a previous video where I've talked about it, whether you've researched it on your own, or whether you've had a really stressful evening or a really stressful week and you've noticed it. But stress does cause acne, and I wanted to talk about exactly how that happens because it's mainly by hormone control. Um, we know that testosterone and adrenal glands have a lot to play into it, but how exactly does that all work and how does stress, something that we respond to, actually cause that to show up on our face. The first thing that happens when you get stressed is a fight or flight response. I think most of us have heard of this and it's basically this rush of adrenaline that enters our bloodstream. And what is the fight or flight response? That was really, really helpful way back when, um, when we were trying to escape a lion or a tiger or something. Our body would pump us full of this adrenaline and it would give us the option to fight against whatever's in front of us um, or to run. And it increases our heart rate, it increases our breathing, it increases the way we think. Um, so we can actually think quicker and faster. Um, it does create a lot of other hormones um, and causes a lot of other hormones to release in the body, which is amazing and super helpful if we're trying to escape a dangerous situation or fight off an attacker that could be bigger or stronger than us. Now, what happens when we get stressed and we get that adrenaline rush, that fight or flight rush of hormones when we're not actually in a dangerous situation? For instance, if we're faced with a really stressful situation or a test, or if we're faced with a really stressful financial or work situation, or if we're stressed at something that's personal or emotional, you're in a fight with someone who you really care about. What happens is that we tend to internalize that stress. We're not using it and so it's letting these hormones kind of pump through our body. And those hormones do have reactions to our body and those reactions do have consequences. Those can be both good and bad. So there's an area of your brain that is responsible for hormone control. It's kind of near the brain stem um, and it connects to the pituitary gland. I think we've all heard of the pituitary gland, or at least I hope so, because that is what kind of regulates and pushes out hormones as well. So the hypothalamus is this little place in your brain that regulates those hormones and the hypothalamus creates a hormone called corticotropin releasing hormone. And that basically signals to this little pituitary gland to create a specific hormone um, to alert our body of what's going on. So when this cortic Cotropin releasing hormones stimulates the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland takes action and creates hormones. The pituitary gland releases another hormone, which is the adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone, which is just a real big fancy name for basically it's trying to tell the body to do something, and it basically stimulates your adrenal glands. Now, what are your adrenal glands? Your adrenal glands are important for bodily function, and they actually sit right on top of your kidneys. And so when this hormone is released from the pituitary gland, it goes throughout your nerve cells and, you know, goes through a chain reaction to your body, and it stimulates these little adrenal glands. And what it does is stimulates them to produce produce cortisol. Cortisol is a very helpful and beneficial and also a very destructive hormone. Cortisol is really known as the stress hormone. And it's what happens when we wake up. Every single morning when we wake up, we have a natural rush of cortisol to our bodies because that's what gets us up and awake for the day. Um, and if you don't eat breakfast, cortisol is actually what deteriorates your muscle tissue, which is why it's important to eat breakfast. But this cortisol is a stress hormone. And like I said, it's very beneficial when you need fast energy. It's very beneficial in um, keeping your body alive in a survival situation. But in an everyday situation, when you're getting stressed out because of road rage and traffic or because the weather is ruining your makeup or your hair, you're creating that hormone that's stimulating your adrenal glands to create cortisol, which causes extra inflammation in your body. Cortisol can actually increase inflammation in your body, especially if you're under chronic stress and you're constantly kind of building up this stress hormone of cortisol. This cortisol can really just affect your inflammation levels and it can cause inflammation and acne. It can also affect things such as arthritis or other inflammatory diseases. Because it is a very powerful hormone, sometimes it stops your body from doing other immune functions, which means you may be more prone to being sick. Have you ever been under like a really stressful situation and for some reason you seem to get sick the next day or the next week and you're like, this is literally the worst time in my life that this could ever happen? iPhone. Becoming sick is caused by an infection, a virus, or a bacteria, but your immune system being weakened by the cortisol could be a reason why your body cannot fight things off as strongly as it should be able to. Another thing that can happen is that cortisol actually may increase sebum production in your skin. Sebum is the oil that sits inside your skin, and when your body releases cortisol, there have been studies that have shown that more sebum is actually created. So what does that mean? That means your skin may be a little bit more oilier and lubricated, which can't be good, but 
oil is kind of the breeding ground for bacteria. It's kind of like if you leave a wet, soggy towel at the bottom of your shower. After a couple weeks, it's probably going to grow mold more so than if you just have your regular shower at the bottom. It's that perfect breeding ground. Well, the oil in your skin is the same thing. It's this perfect little breeding ground for bacteria to grow. And if your immune system is weakened, you're probably not fighting off bacteria as well. And if you've got this extra inflammation in your skin, that can also cause more pimples to show up and be a lot more inflamed and painful. Um, so that's exactly how stress actually affects your body and really creates acne or worsens acne. And it is a huge amalgamation of things from the oil to the bacteria to the hormones, etc. But if you notice that you are chronically breaking out and you are under a lot of stress and perhaps products just aren't cutting it, looking at how you can minimize your stress, looking at stress reduction techniques, or just looking at new logical ways to solve some of the problems that you've been facing or putting off in your life may be helpful. Um, I'm a big procrastinator and that attributes to a lot of my stress. Um, so dealing with some of that has helped me decrease my inflammation and try to help get my acne under control, which I actually posted a video on recently. So if you haven't seen my acne update, check it out. But if you guys have other questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try to link you to some articles and stuff down there. Um, if you have direct questions, you can always reach me on my app, which is Cassandra Bankson. Um, and click subscribe and the like button if you liked this video or want more acne videos. Because um, I do post new videos every Monday and every Thursday. Uh, but I love you guys. I hope you're having a great one. Always remember to be beautiful. And I will see you all in the next video. <sighs> love you guys. Bye. Hey guys, for today's video, I wanted to bring you three tips on growing longer, stronger hair, and one thing that people think grows hair that actually doesn't do really anything for it. I wanted to share these tips with you because recently I have been growing out my hair 